Right, here we have what you need for an experiment into the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction in dried yeast. So you'll need um, straw. One straw can be cut into four pieces and if you put two marks on each of the four pieces that's so that you can measure the time it takes for the carbon dioxide bubble to move from one mark to the next mark. So as long as the distance is the same between each of the straws, it doesn't really matter what the distance is, you can work that out depending on how much time you've got to do the experiment. Uh, a ruler to mark out the, to measure the distance between the two markings, um, a water bath and a yeast suspension. Now the yeast suspension you can make from uh, one sachet of dried yeast which is about 7 grams, 5 grams of yeast, but I've, uh, 5 grams of sugar, but obviously you can vary that depending on uh, whether you're doing an experiment to look at the effects of sugar on the rate of reaction, and about 100 ml of water. You can play around with the actual quantities just to figure out what you actually need, but you can see already in this suspension of yeast, you can see a little bubbles forming. So the idea is that you set up the yeast suspension with the sugar and the um, about 30 to 40 degrees centigrade water, water bath for about 30 minutes before students actually start to do the practical. Once you've left it for 30 minutes then they can check the temperature of it. So you've got a, a thermometer, I've got a digital thermometer off eBay. <laughs> can we have that back, thank you. Uh, uh, which was three pounds including delivery, which I thought was quite good. Um, and you can basically make sure that they know to stir up the suspension before they take the sample. So this is currently reading about 23 degrees, so it'll be a little bit slower than the 30 degrees. So next you need a syringe, a five millimeter syringe, and you take up your suspension into the syringe. Doesn't matter exactly how much, you can take up a mill or whatever. Then this is the crucial bit. You put your syringe your, into your into your straw. There. Thank you. And then you've got to really uh, hold the syringe onto the straw and you eject your fluid from the syringe into the body of the straw up to the first mark. Start your stop clock and time how long it takes for the fluid to move into the end straw. The most important thing, because you can see actually already it's starting to come out of the syringe, um, is that students use fresh straws, which is why I've started using straws rather than glass tubes, because if you use uh, glass tubes and they get wet, then you can't reuse them for the next experiment, and obviously you're going to need a lot of glass tubes. So it's better to use a fresh straw for every single experiment, that way you won't get the capillary action going along the straw, it's just because of the production of carbon dioxide, and then you get a true reading of the rate of respiration. So once they've timed how long it takes to move that particular distance, then all they need to do is one divided by that time and they get a rate of reaction. So like I said, you can do it. It works as a beautiful bell-shaped curve for 0 degrees, 10, 20, 30, 40 and 70 degrees. So that will get you an effective temperature with the peak being between 30 and 40 degrees. And it also works with sugar. So if you have no sugar, then you get no reaction and too much sugar. Um, it kills off your yeast. But I'm not exactly sure exactly how much sugar you have to use, so you'll have to try that one out. So if I just insert the fluid, start your stop clock and you'll watch it move up to the mark and time how long that takes. And that's basically the experiment and it works which is nice. Uh, but the top tip is that the students really should hold the um, straw onto the syringe that way to prevent any air gaps getting in and stopping the reaction from working. The important thing really is to double check the temperature of your yeast suspension when you're using it. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, apologies for the interruptions, <laughs> but have a go yourselves.